Today's webinar is brought to you by Forex.today, hosted at Forex.today. Swing on by. Let me remind you that trading and investing is risky and not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not indicative of future results. So please stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term. Risk money, never risk money you cannot afford to lose. And in fact, remember the theme of yesterday's webinar and the webinar before that, which by and large you could say, you know, how do you get filthy stinking rich trading Forex? And that's by uh, taking logical, intelligent, well thought out, well planned trades in the direction of your long term bias, one trade at a time with as little risk as possible, then removing the risk by moving your stop to break even, and then adding a second trade and then the third and fourth and fifth and sixth over and over and over and over again each time entering the trade logically intelligently with a well thought out plan take putting a small stop loss to reduce your risk move, removing your stop to break even when you can to remove your risk completely and then adding another and another and another and let compound interest take care of the rest versus degenerate gambling Hey, my name is Wayne. It's nice to meet you. I'm a currency trader. What do you do? Yes, I'm in the business of buying and selling money. At least I don't have to dance anymore. It's 7.30 in the morning, a couple hours before the Wall Street open. It's approximately London lunch. Time to get together and have a strategy session. How did the London session treat you guys? The only thing weaker than the dollar is the pound. Nice. Uh, Pow asks a good question, actually. Uh, have I ever touched on how to properly tra um, trail a stop and not move your stop too soon? Well, I think the example I gave on swing trading uh, yesterday or the day before was to enter the trade as you normally would, maybe with a 50 pip stop at, at hardcore supported resistance and all that kind of stuff, waiting for second or third or even tertiary opportunity, and then come back the next day. Okay, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, seriously, because you're not scalping per se. So um, be in it to win it. I've gone as far as doing like 150 pip stops. Uh, now, of course, that's because I, my minimal acceptable performance is 300 pips. The reason I do that is that's more than one average daily range in most cases, in most scenarios. And the only way I could possibly be wrong, assuming I did enter at hardcore support or resistance, is that the entire market has reversed. I was wrong because I don't gamble. So if the market's moving up and I buy at support, it's not going to knock me out. There's just no way unless it reverses. And then, you know what? I was proven that market conditions changed and how was I supposed to know? But it's pretty rare for the market to reverse that way, isn't it? So hey, if it only happens 20 or 30% of the time, I'm cool with that. I can afford it because I'm not over leveraged. Meanwhile, I got 19 trades at break even, so what do I care if one gets knocked out? So that's another thought, depends on your strategy, right? All right, my friends. Let's go through the charts. Um, yeah. All right. All right. Uh, mm, uh, mm, mm, mm. Do we want to go through this? We do it every day, don't we? Um, I have sort of an inkling going on, and I'm wondering if we should inkle. I don't know how I will do this. Uh, let's mess up with our scumbag Swissy.
Go ahead and take your time, Swiss Frank. There you go. And then, uh, I don't know, I'm just uh, tearing up the script here. Um, not sure. I have an inkling here, but not a well thought out. Um, let's, let's do some different things here. Um, there might, I might not have exotic enough pairs, which I suppose is fine. Yeah, I guess not. Yeah, no, I'm good. Let's go, just go back. Let's go to back to our, our normal, our normal stuff. We'll inkle some other time. Uh, news trade. All right, let's let's start with the gold. How many of you guys actually trade gold? Even though every day I say gold's not the thing you should be trading. Don't worry, you're not going to insult me, and I don't mean to insult you. But how many people do it every day, anyways? <laughs> So you're obviously short a term, right? All right. So that's fine. Uh, are you buying or selling? Seems to me you're buying. Okay. You're right at my resistance line that I, I drew a long time ago. So if you were a bear here, um, and you, you could see if I go out to like the four hour, I already have it clearly marked, right? We're, we're approaching this area, which, you know, diagonal lines to me are just sort of guidelines. They're not hardcore. I consider horizontal support and resistance much more hardcore than the suggestive this could be resistance area so anyways we're we're, we're kind of heading up there but more importantly this this darker uh, brick colored um, resistance zone is resistance based on price action right used to be resistance here go out even farther and so it was resistance here, but it was support in here. And I think you can go back out even farther. And it was support here, and support here, and support here. So I think it could be very bearish. Not probably immediately, but by the end of the day. So one of the things you could look for is a reversal pattern. Now, did you get caught up in this one? Did you sell the lower low, lower high? and take a loss or break even yeah that's fine it's okay all right it's okay so maybe now we get a double top or even a, a higher high up into here but if i was a bear i would be kind of looking for the reversal pattern and waiting okay if i was a bull um you know you're about 15 minutes late but you know, you can you can kind of go in here. You're not really with the moving averages, though. I know it's hard to see, but that moving average uh, is a little uh, a little flat. But you should be long. But again, you're longing up near pretty obvious resistance. It might be too little, too late. As a bull, though, you see this high relative to this high. This is a 15-minute chart, so this is what your, your day traders could be doing, right? What do you do? As soon as it makes this high, the way that you mark up your chart is you move this across, okay? And even though this is a commodity, this is exactly how I trade currencies, okay? Then it makes a new higher high. What do I do to mark up my chart? I do this, okay? These are suggestive buy zones in the future. When, when we're here at this peak, you draw this and say, it will come back. Ooh, it will come back. And you'll be ready. Now, obviously, we didn't touch here, but it's a guide. Makes a new higher high up into here. How do you mark up your chart? Okay. And it did come back. Now, zooming in a little bit, the next thing that you do to help, if you need it, is you draw your fibs. This made a 50% retracement and touched the roll reversal. 
that's a buy. Okay, this is a buy in here, not not after it takes off. Okay, comes up, comes down. You're expecting their guideline here is maybe down here near the weekly pivot point. That makes a lot of sense. Not because it's a weekly, but uh, just because they're a confluence. Now notice this. Right? Notice it comes up and look where it tops out at the 1618. Isn't that cool? So, anyway, so it makes a new high now. And uh, let's do it this way. Notice it came up, didn't make the 618 like we thought it would do because it's a pivot point and a roll reversal. But it's such a bullish market that it came down, hit the 3A2, and is on its way up. 3A2 predicts a 1618. 1618 is right up here near our line, so let's call it a cluster in here around what? Not not 1150. Now, if I were playing the psych level, I would think 1150. So we'll see. But nonetheless, it moves its way up, makes a new higher high. You draw the mark, you know, you mark it out the roll reversal, take the new top. It could be this one or this one, whatever. It's kind of messy, I understand. And again, it would have been a 618 retracement, but, well, actually, we got this one. Let me try to zoom in more. Okay. You, we would have drawn it this way at the time, because that was the new high. Comes down, look at this, guys, exactly 618, up to the top. Now we're kind of consolidating. Haven't made a lower low, so it's not bearish yet, although... If you're being a bear, an aggressive bear, you would have been trying to play this. And that's what I was saying earlier. If you were playing that as a bear, you did the right thing, even if you might have lost money. Now, your stop might be above the higher high, so you might be fine. Okay? And I think what happens now here as a bear, I think you should be paying attention to the 618. Because if that doesn't fail, you should probably... T or if, if that fails... You might want to take a walk. But if your stop is uh, above here, then you have the 618 to protect you. You have the 786 to, to protect you. You have the double top to protect you, and, and you're playing the double top. You're playing it early and aggressive. That's how it goes, yo. Does that make sense, guys? So if you're a bull, you wanted to buy it down here, not far from where we are now. You might want to buy a dip if you're a bull. Just like a little micro on a five-minute cycle or something. And if if you're a bear, this whole area is interesting. You could sell it to 618, the 786, the double top. Okay. Typically what I do, just the, the reverse of the buy zones with using FIBS, I'll, I'll left shoulder this thing, kind of like a head and shoulders. But remember the discussion I gave on trading head and shoulders? I don't really call it a head and shoulders. It's always just a one, two, three domain, no matter how you draw it. So I would play it like a head and shoulders if I was bare here. I'd use this left shoulder. I know it's not a pretty reversal pattern, but nonetheless, we're at hardcore resistance that I drew weeks ago. So this is a good setup. We obviously respected it. We did make the lower low. You could still hammock this thing. And there's nothing wrong with the 618 Hymek, right? Yeah, Harry and Ron, they're uh, they're making some changes to the uh, the back office, the back end of it. So. Okay. No, no, why? We started with gold. But what do you guys think of the, the price action? Is it always good to, to review this stuff? I'm, I'm never sure because we do it every day, it seems. So I don't want to bore you. So it's one of these things like, I don't know what you know, and I don't know what you don't know, and you might not know what you don't know, so, you know? What about oil? Oil. Oil. 
Is this an indication of risk on or risk off, what you see here? Yeah. So, WWWD. Typically, in a risk off scenario, the Japanese yen is going to get strong. That's about it. When the US was playing a safe haven, and it was a safe haven role recently, then we would buy dollar and we would buy Japanese yen. All right, you'd buy dollar by yen. But is the U.S. a safe haven right now? Is that how people are trading it? No. So what funding currency are you using right so you, you you get out of the you 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 get out of the US dollar and you get into the yen now the opposite of the US dollar right now if you look at the volume of trading and you can get this from the the bank of international settlements which is the bank for central banks do you guys know the BIS so the central bank is the bank for banks but then central banks have a bank. So you can you can Google that and stuff, and they'll tell you a big volume. So the vast majority of Forex trades is still Euro USD. So if someone is selling dollar, they're probably buying Euro, but not because they're buying Euro, because they're getting out of the Euro shorts. So they were long dollar. So to get out of the long dollar on risk off days, they have to sell the dollar and convert it back to uh, yet yeah, back to euro. So the euro goes up, but it's not really buying. So it's like when you add the vo um, the order flow application that I, that I give uh, those that have Traders Way accounts, um, euro would go up, but you're not seeing any orders. But that's information too, right? How could it possibly go up if nobody's buying it? <laughs> oh, it's all relative, my friend. They're not buying it. They're just exiting their shorts. Yeah. So anyways, um, so I, I look at oil. Because remember, I told you this, you know, well, I don't know, almost every day. Uh, I'm not interested in, in buying or selling oil. I don't think it's really going to go up much or fall much. But it's a good barometer, isn't it? it? It's our canary in the gold mine. And did I say gold mine? Coal mine. It's our canary in the coal mine. Okay. So, interesting. So we'll see what happens when it drops a little lower. We haven't really tested this orange line that goes back a million years. Remember, this was our target when we shorted at 62. Sorry, 61.8. Um, we shorted there for a target of this 44, and it dropped even lower. Oh, sorry. And now we're back above it, and now we're about to retest our old. All right. Just to, to remind you, maybe it wasn't this chart. I guess it wasn't. Well, yeah. Let me zoom in. There's our trade, right? We shorted here. 618, which is a 382, $61.80. We shorted at 62, target 44, based on this and this. And it went a little lower. Now we're back above. So really, to me, nothing's happened. But remember what's going on, guys. We're preparing for the Fed to raise interest rates in December. We're preparing for additional quantitative easing out of Japan, October 30th. And then we're, talk, we're waiting for the Europeans to maybe hint that they may consider one day possibly if, if uh, 
if the moon crashes into Earth, um, also adding quantitative easing. We also would like to um, hear the Bank of England say that they want to raise interest rates. Well, sometimes that happens and it gets strong, and then then we find out it's not happening, and then it falls. Demeter says, Wayne, is it possible to demonstrate later on today how to add positions, how to manipulate the stop of the first trade? Well, look, again, it depends on what you're doing, Demeter. So let me just answer it. It's a pretty easy answer. If you're building a basket such as a carry trade, you move the stop to break even on the first trade. Then maybe the next day you look for a new opportunity to buy a dip. If you get that, you buy it. Your stop goes into the normal place. And maybe at the end of the second day, you move that one to break even. So your question here is, do you move both stops to the new break even point? You could. It's more of a swing trade. If you are in a carry trade, by and large, your strategy is to never, ever, ever, ever get out. So you wouldn't move the stop on the first one. It's at break even, you're done. As far as you're concerned, you're going to be in the trade for a year. Okay? Now, obviously, there's always a caveat to that. So if you need to, you can then start to trail by maybe several hundred pips, like three or four or five hundred pips. You can trail that stop to lock in some more profit, which is fine. Uh, I also combine that with, let's say, my sentiment towards the market, whether it's overheated or not, um, massive levels of support and resistance, or even more importantly, the calendar. So sometimes I'll be in dozens of trades, and then we hit Thanksgiving, and I will sit here, and I will stare at the chart almost minute by minute sweating. Should I get out? 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 Some years I have to get out. Other years I stay in. I've had some horrible Thanksgivings. Seriously, I remember like cutting the turkey one year, and I'm like, I don't even know why I'm in this room. I need to be in front of my charts. <laughs> I'm like, I can't believe it. Like, literally, Wayne, it's time to carve the turkey. And I'm in the office. Oh, my God. I, I can't leave. I can't leave. So I run into the, all right, here's your damn turkey. Here's your damn turkey. Now eat up. <laughs> Quick, eat. Can't you eat faster? <laughs> uh, yeah, no joke about that either. Like, seriously, I'm um, because... Everything's fragile, and it could just come crashing down in a heartbeat. And then others, it just nothing happens during Thanksgiving, and which is perfect. That's exactly what you want in a carry trade, nothing happening. And then you hang on all the way to Christmas, and then usually, you know, the first or second week of um, trading, you get out. Or if you, for tax purposes, you can, you can bail on the trades on the first of the year, uh, on the 31st, if you want to take your profit that way but you know you try to hang on to the end of the year so it's a calendar based thing so um, you know the, my my last big exit was second week of January and that's where you know like 60 trades were taken out all in the same day because I had moved my stop within 300 pips of price so I said look if the yens drop 300 pips and particularly quickly like while I'm sleeping if the yens drop 300, which they can do when an unwind hits, just one day the yens drop 300. So I had it trailing. At that point, I changed the strategy, moved all the stops. Every stop was at the same price, at the same 300 pips. And uh, I remember that day I sat down in the kitchen. I was actually at the kitchen counter, 
booting up my laptop so I can eat breakfast and watch the charts. Sounds familiar, right? Open it up and I'm like, <laughs> holy crap, I don't have any positions in the market. None. And it felt so good. It felt so bad. I felt lonely. I'm like, now what? I went from five dozen trades to nothing. So you kind of want to like cheer, but you kind of want to cry too. Because a 300 pip drop is a big loss, but you got to get out at some point, right? 300 pips times 60. But, you know, just that's only two days worth of price action anyways, so. But, you know, it, take, it took me six to nine months to rebuild it. So anyways, uh, that's that. Let's move on .com. Yesterday we talked about the stock market, that the prevailing, uh, the, the trade winds are up. Well, we kicked off that 55, which is something we did discuss. So most likely we're going to see a drop down into here. We had this chance yesterday where if it was going to go up off the reversal, it should have gone up. I still think it's going to go up. But remember the question that I'm trying to train your brain to remember? If your bias is up, if you're a bull, you need to say, do I buy it now or do I buy it later? What I talked about yesterday was I'd like to see a higher high, then a higher low, but I still probably wouldn't buy it. Then I'd like to see another higher high, but I still wouldn't buy it, and then have it come down and make another higher low, and that's where I'd probably buy it. On this side, though, after it starts going up, after it's made the the higher low. I don't, I don't even know why this is still here. Okay. So I look at this and I say, okay, I'm a bull. I'm totally a bull. For example, is anyone going to buy Volkswagen, the stock? It used to be something like $250 a share. Now you can pick it up for 100 bucks. Alejandro bought some. Horis bought some. Horis. Wow. Yeah. Pop in a million and see how it goes. I asked my wife yesterday, I'm like, all right, used to be two hundred and fifty dollar stock, now it's a hundred bucks. And I said, should we buy it? She's like, I don't know. I said, all right, let me ask you a question. Do you think Volkswagen will be around 25 years from now? Yes. Do you think people will still buy a Volkswagen despite them che cheating on some diesel EPA thing? Yes. Do you think they'll still remain competitive building Volkswagen-type vehicles and selling them for a profit? Yes then you should probably buy it. And she's like, yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> I love those types of conversations with family. All right. So I guess what I'm saying here is everything is bearish. As If you were bear selling into there is like selling a cloud. YJ can do that all day. Um, so, yeah, it's bearish. You don't have to sell it, though. Okay. Cool. And Germany, who cares? All right. Let's go through Beast. Beast, Beast, Beast. Right? Are you a bull or a bear? If you're a bear, you're already short, so it doesn't matter. If you're a bull, you're asking yourself, should I buy it now or should I buy it later? Seems like a, uh, a wait and see, doesn't it? Now, this was an aggressive move here, okay? But this was a nice move long, and then... It the, on a higher time frame, this was a nice move long. And then this was buyable, and it failed. 
just total eclipse of your profits, right? I don't like to attempt to catch a falling knife. Made 100 pips on the beast yesterday, thanks to me. Cool. Wow. Right on. Oh, wow. You guys are talking about morality? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Morality of what? Wow. Maybe I don't even want to go there. All right. So, looks very bearish to me. 21 is below the 55. 55 is below the 200. And the 21 is in control. So, you're a bear and you're aggressive. Demeter, what my understanding on risk, my understanding risk on is when investors buy the stock market. Yes, that is true. Investing in stock is risky. Yes. On the other hand, risk off is when bonds are being purchased. Buying bonds is less risky than buying stocks. Yes, that is all correct. Buying a bond is like going to cash. Except it pays a higher interest rate than your bank account. Risk on, you buy stocks. Risk off, you buy bonds. There's, right? So anyways, got to be careful there. We even blew through weekly pivot points. Piggy is falling hard and fast. And Piggy has been paying very well recently and very good. The problem with it is it was paying on the way up and then it was paying on the way down and well you better know what you're doing. But again, 21 is below the 55. Technically right here you're a bear. Right? We've discussed this a lot. Technically right here you become a bear. So what is the trigger? Now that you're a bear, when do you sell? On the 5A cross down. Okay. So there's a 5A cross down here. Dropped uh, 100 and something pips. And a 5A cross here. Dropped about 100 pips. And about... Two hours ago, we got another 5A cross down. If you don't like the 5.8, because it's a little late because you're waiting for a cross, the other way to do it is just use the moving average. Sell at the 21, down. Sell at the 21, down. Sell at the 21, down. That's why we use it. It's a dynamic level of resistance. If you don't like that, you use the oscillators. Sell, sell, sell. And this one, you would not have sold because it was never overbought. Other than that, <laughs> I mean, how many, how many different reasons do you want to sell? Um, I don't know. Other than that, I don't think you need anything other than that. If you didn't sell any of those, you were just not a bear, and that's cool. Don't worry about it. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Le so that's good. Good trading. And ask yourself, do you sell now or do you sell later? In this case, you're going to sell later. All right. Kitty cat. That doesn't look right. Is that right? That doesn't look right. There we go. I suppose that looks better. Uh, 
so this is our old zone from a uh, from a long time ago. I'm just going out to a daily. Okay. So you can see if you put it in a context, we're just consolidating above the old resistance. So we're just sort of redefining support. But it's a big it's a big problem because it's it's so weak right now. It's just like, wow, really kind of stuff. And uh, you know, I will. I reminded you guys when it when the Canadian dollar was worth more than the U.S. dollar. I reminded you that I grew up in Canada as a child, in the '80s, and as far back as I could remember, the Canadian dollar has always been half of the U.S. dollar. Half. So to see it at above at parity and above was amazing. Um, now we're down to 70 cents and falling, and you know, I, as far as I'm concerned, I don't see why it can't go to 50 cents, because it's always been 50 cents as, as far as my memory. And I even remember um, uh, the first time I took my, my wife to Canada to meet my Canadian family, um, I, I remember even then, uh, everything was half price. So you go to Canada to visit the family. And we were doing like a family reunion, so we're at a hotel. So, all right, well, let's rent the penthouse suite and let's have all the aunties up to the suite to have tea and sandwiches and, you know, oh, room service, room service, room service. Hey, everything's half price anyway. <laughs> right? That's kind of, I remember that. I remember uh, talking to the car rental place. I'm like, a, a suburban? Do you have anything bigger? for me please I don't and money is not an object I just want something bigger than this lame -o suburban I mean you're in Alberta for crying out loud a suburbans like a a, a a compact give me a big vehicle you sissy so I, hey when everything's half price you know you're a king man you're a king well we're on our way back as And one of the reasons for that is I don't see why gold should go up, right? I don't see why oil should go up. So why would the Canadian dollar go up? Maybe copper, nickel or something? Okay. But by the way, I know when I'm going to buy these things back. I've already told you multiple times. So let it fall. Let it fall. I'll be there. I'm, I'm going to buy the Canadian dollar when there's blood in the street. Okay. Horace, are you still hedging with the uh, Canadian dollar? Every time the USD CAD goes up, you're buying it, right? You're buying it at support on every retracement. Think of it, guys. I, I, I've given everyone advice at, at some level to the same to the same way. Every Pick a bias on any currency pair, and the bias should be the same. So, like, if you're a bull on the dollar, you, you can't be bullish on the euro dollar. Some some people mix that up. But what I'm saying is, if on USD CAD your bias is up, all you do over and over and over again is buy the buy the dip. As long as it's an uptrend, well, that looks like an uptrend, right? Makes a new higher high, you buy into there. Makes a new higher high. Right? Come on now. You buy into here, makes a new higher high. You buy in here. And this is what you do all day. OK. 
Okay. You see how you just do this over and over and over again? Yeah, I know that's only the price action for the entire week so far. I know it's like one trade a day. I, I know it's, you know, you only have nine or somewhere between nine and 12 hours to prepare to make the trade. I know it's too fast. But, but I don't know what, but if you want to trade this, if, right? See, I think what might happen to some of you guys is you watch everything and do nothing. Anybody get caught in that trap? Look, I, I know it's true because, you know, I I fell victim to that a lot. Okay. So, let's go back to my advice last month and 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 the month before and the month before that. Especially when the market was slow. Remember that time when the market was slow? And I said, let me tell you what you should be doing because you don't want to overtrade when the market's slow. I want you to do long-term fundamental or long-term technical analysis on just one or two pairs or one or two currencies. Develop a fundamental bias. Write that fundamental bias down on a piece of paper with a stinky felt tip marker. And I want you to post it on the wall or the window or on your board. You see what I mean? I'm trying to get you to make it less complicated, guys. I want you to make it less complicated. Anyone that makes Forex look complicated is an idiot. So if you're taking some course somewhere, got some DVDs and, and, and it's it's 27 DVDs on technical analysis, uh, throw it away. I'm trying to make it simple, right? Look, pick a direction on something. Just pick two different currencies. Either buy the dollar or sell the dollar. Just make a decision. I don't care how you come to the conclusion, but it would be good if you actually made it lo logical, intelligent. I don't care if I agree with you or not. Just be a bull or a bear. Just decide. Do you decide. Okay? And then go out and, 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 and trade that. And you don't need... 95 different currency pairs, right? Kiwi, Turkish, Lira. Wayne, can you, right? But you also avoid situations like, what was it yesterday or the day before? Like, Wayne, can you tell me your thoughts on Euro Yen? I'm like, yeah. Why the hell would you trade it? That's my thought. Oh, but it's going up. Oh, but, but it's going down. <laughs> yeah, but I couldn't tell you which, why or when. Because it doesn't make any sense to me. So what you need to do is boil it down. Look, if you're buying the, the U.S. dollar, I can I could conceive of the notion that you're you could possibly be bullish, right? You could possibly be a bull. Now, couldn't you also possibly be a bear on the Canadian dollar since we've been selling it for about seven months straight? And that the number one story in the last, you know, in the last six months of trading, is the collapse in inflation due to uh, commodity prices deteriorating across the board. Not just one um, commodity, but every commodity. So you could possibly, I'm just throwing it out there, you could possibly be bearish on the USD, or in this case, bullish on the USD CAD. You could. And it could just be one of those pairs. You're like, man, I think commodities are going to stay low. I think Canada is going to get punished. 
I like to buy the Canadian or the U.S. dollar because I believe they're going to raise interest rates. And you could just like just do this. This could be one of your three pairs now, right? So I'm trying to get you to to have your marketable idea. We, I think that was Monday we talked about it. What's your marketable idea? I look at everything and and do nothing. Is that the strategy you're going to explain to your multimillionaire investors? I'm really good at that. I'm going to watch everything and do nothing. So you could say, you know what? Here's my alpha. And this is what makes you smarter than everybody else. Your alpha. Okay, beta is the general market. Your alpha is your ability to beat the market without taking more risk. Linda, that depends on what you see. Now, I think these... Most of the time, currencies trend or consolidate for months at a time. Okay, and I, I break I break the 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 year into three parts: the spring, the summer, and the fall. It's just three parts to me. And I don't know, winter doesn't exist. I live in Georgia. Okay, and that's it. And each each has, each is doing a different part of the cycle. Okay. Okay. So, like the spring builds up the positions, the summer we consolidate, fall the trends explode. Okay. So that's so you could plan your trades maybe that way. Okay. But nonetheless, guys, I want you to boil it down to, you know, if your alpha is like, I believe commodity currencies are going to fall and the U.S. dollar is going to rise. You don't even have to talk yen. You don't have to talk about anything else. So you could say to your investors, well, I plan on selling Kiwi dollar, Aussie dollar, and buying USD CAD. And that would be, those are your charts now. But look at this. This is these are hourly. Is this first one tradable? Okay. Is the second one tradable? Is the third one tradable? Now, also one thing that you should notice in your analysis here is each each time you notice how it comes down just slightly lower, this is you breaking even every time and getting frustrated, right? So you should notice how, to, based on previous price action, how to manage your stop. So one of the things you guys want from me is to say, Wayne, just tell me, where should I put my stop? How many pips? When should I move it? Well, you need to you need to do your analysis what are the market conditions what has happened just previously okay there's no easy answer do your job is the answer right wait and you're like well that's frustrating Wayne because I don't know and well the answers are there you you can you know I wouldn't be too quick on this one Right? So, like I said, move your stop once a day. And it'll keep doing this until what? Okay. Until price does this. Okay? If this was a carry trade, I would leave all three stops the same. If I'm swing trading, oh, come on, dude, seriously. Okay, if I'm swing trading, I'll have my stops clustered here on all of them.
Look at this. It's amazing sometimes. Come on, MT4. There we go. Okay. Okay. And why is this gray zone here? Why did I draw that? Because I'm going to buy it at this level somewhere in the future. Later today. Isn't that nice? And then I'll move all these stops here. So, Eric... You're offering to open a trade the next day instead of moving stops? Or, or if it's a carry trade, you would leave the stops and just add a new position. If you're swing trading, you'd move all the stops after entering a new position. And when you can move it to break even, you move all the other ones to break even. <clears throat> so the difference is how long you want to be in the trade. So if it's a swing trade, you could have four open positions right and all your stops may be 75 pips away from current price and 100 percent available available margin if you're carry trading you could have four positions open one trade is 75 pips away at break even another one is 125 pips away at break even another one is 220 pips away at break even the other one could be 400 pips away also at break even, also 100% available margin. What's the likelihood it's going to come all the way back, and knock your 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 trade with 400 pips? What's the likelihood it's going to come all the way down, and knock that out of break even? Much lower than uh, just a short-term blip in price action, and that's the idea. You never want to get out. Right? Do you guys remember when USD yen was at like 80 or something? I suggested you buy it and give it to your children in your will. Does anybody remember some of those comments? That you, sh you should buy the USD yen and put it in your will. At 80. Okay. The yen has uh, uh, plummeted in value versus the U.S. dollar by 50%. 50%. Now, if you put leverage on that, we're talking 5,000%. Oh, well, I guess that's okay. So it depends. Can you imagine? If you bought the pound yen and you're up 3,000 pips, are you worried about getting knocked out at a break even? Then, then it's a risk issue, James, so that is easily fixed. Yeah, but Zeal maximized profit. Um, that's, a, that's sort of a manufactured idea inside the human brain. Right? So Eric says, never get out. It's an interesting thing, right? But uh, I guess it's greed. 
But if you if you see it falling and then enter again, yeah. The problem is people don't do it, Eric. Now you have to swing both ways. And most people do that in a very inefficient manner. <laughs> Israel, how do you fix that? Well, you hire me. Okay, so uh, Euro USD, right? I wish I had the chart. Uh, it must be, we must have been on the actual profile. Uh, is it here? So I'm going to adjust this this way. Let's see how the what happens up there. Same analysis, just different timing. Eric says it's a great idea for super long trades, but what about commissions? Might be really high. I don't understand that because it would be the same whether you're scalping or spot trading, swing trading, long-term positions. And that wouldn't change anything about commissions. No, you, you, mean, you mean interest rate payments. No, you, you're carry trading. So you're only long. You only earn money. There's no commissions. You earn money. Yeah, Lou, we already know that. It's risk off today, so not a problem. I mean, but Eric, that's the whole point. If you know, even when interest rates are unbelievably low, you know, if you're earning 1% or 2%, depending on which currency pair, and, and obviously you're going to try to catch the ones that pay higher interest rates, but even now when interest rates are unbelievably low, it's still somewhere between 100 and 200% on the money you put into the market. So only one or two hundred percent, right? That's it. Only a hundred percent return on investment. That sucks. Oh wait, that's actually pretty good. So imagine when it goes back to you know the differentials go back to you know four or five or six percent. So anyways, that's what I'm looking at here. Be interesting if it goes up a little higher, see what happens. And this was our plan back in here. I thought it would go up, test, and then drop. So what it did is go down a little bit farther and then go up. That's fine. So, you know, just don't chase price. So let's try to mark this up in a different fashion. Um, Another thing you could do, same thing, just different. Okay. 
So I'd say somewhere between the three eight, the somewhere between the fifty percent and the six one eight might be pretty cool. But just the reason you have this little line here is so that you can actually see to the left the support and resistance. Someone could dump it here if they wanted to. Is there a moving average on a higher time frame? That's another thing you should be watching. Mm, nothing critical either way. Okay. So if you're a bear, do you sell now or do you sell later? If you're a bull, do you buy now or buy later? Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Some might think that this will come down and then head up. Then if it reversed here, it'll have to come down, head up, but not higher, and then down again, making a lower low, and then head up, and then we sell. USD yen. So the dollar is, you know, it's weakish. It's weakish. It's not incredibly weak. But the yen is strong and the pound is weak. So that's why we covered the beast today. Clearly, pound yen is falling. It's heading down to the next pivot. Head down the, you know, forget it. So what do you think? Is it going back to 19? Well, we were just at 19. So we'll see, huh? 19 to 1850 could be an interesting buy. Now, if you notice on this higher time frame on the four hour, we have this resistance up the top we've already identified, and we ha already have support at the bottom identified. And then we got this big Bowman support at 17. Oh yeah, Rick. Rick says the price action will reverse. So uh, I think you were talking. Was it euro? Un momento por favor. Um. Where did we have it? Because it was here. All right. So your question is, will it reverse at the 50% or the 618? So which one is it going to be?
I would have no clue. How the hell would I know that? So, I watch it. When it gets in the, the zone, the sweet spot, as I call it, the, somewhere between the 3A2 and 618, I put my finger on the trigger. It could come down, and, and we got to, right, it could come down and just touch the 3A2 and go. Okay. Seems to me it, it wants to wait for the 21 and then go. Okay. So I don't know which one it's going to be, but if I'm a bull, I'm waiting for something like that. Okay. So Rick says, but what if it comes down to the 50% and then goes and stops you out? Well, it's not going to do that. I know because I'm a bull. It's just not going to do that. It might do it like, uh, let's say I make money eight or nine times in a row, and maybe on the tenth one it comes down and knocks me out for a small loss. But if, if you're trading in the direction of your trend, it's not going to knock you out. Why would it knock you out? It's just not going to do it. It's a bullish market. There's no. It's not going to come down. If I am, I'm here, right? So, James, he's asking if, if it comes down because it's on this time frame it's bullish and he's buying retracements, well, how do I know which one it's going to be before it heads back up? And I don't know. And then, well, and then what if it comes down and knocks you out here? Well, who cares? It's not likely to happen. The only time I'd be worried about that is if the market was reversing. But even then, what's the likelihood, uh, just from your own observation, what's the likelihood the market's going to do this? It's going to make 120% Fibonacci retracement right off the, to the top. I'd say extremely low. Because what it's going to do is it's going to come down, maybe make a 618, and then then make a reverse Fib, right? So then it's going to do a 618 of this, and then, then it's going to fall, and then you're knocked out for a tiny loss or maybe break even. <laughs> Marcia is enjoying oil. You know, Marcia, I used to trade oil every day at the close, and I used to make somewhere between $1 and $2 on oil in like 15 seconds. Sometimes it would take two minutes. Now it doesn't move two dollars an entire day. Yeah. Yeah, again guys, we already know that. We've, we already covered that when I said risk off. Right? The end strong. No duh. Commodities are falling. Yeah. So, make some money. And uh, I should be ending here, but let's do an Aussie. And then call it quits. But imagine that, guys. Two dollars is a huge day in oil. I used to do that in like two minutes. It used to be just, in, but here's the thing: it would drop one or two dollars in that very, very short amount of time, and I, I'd be watching it go it, by tick, up and down, up and down, up and down, and and I would hit boom, and I'm like, get out, and oh, I get my two dollars, and like literally. 
37 seconds later, it's all the way back up above where I entered. So put it this way, it would drop $1, then $2, $2.50, and then all of a sudden go up, 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 and then it's up $3. And if I hadn't gotten it out for my $2 profit, I would have lost. <laughs> Just holy smokes. It was dramatic. All right, so Ozzy. All right, let's go in here. Okay. It fell. This is what we did the other day. It fell, made the lower low. We created this as a sell zone. Guess what? It fell again. Yeah, I've only been bearish three years. So fairly easy to predict. Um, and look. Again, uh, so easy it might be boring. So there it is for tomorrow. Okay. If you wanted to kick it off to 15 minute 21, you certainly could because it's going to be an hourly five. Funny, I don't even have a five EMA on this chart. Well, trust me, that's an hourly five EMA. So, let's try it here, hourly. Yeah. But the price action is, you know, dare I say, too easy. Okay. If you're using the moving averages, right, down into the moving averages, down into the moving averages, down into the moving averages, down, and we're in the moving averages now with a with a Stokes kicker. It's just one of these things. Pay attention, right? Tico says you hope it's going to be the last drive. You need to get rid of that. Those, those emotions um, can be dangerous. You should just look at it as basic fundamental analysis, basic technical analysis. It's heading down. Now, you might have some personal wealth tied up in the Aussie dollar, perhaps. Um, well, then make money as it falls and hedge your positions. That's why we are, that's why currency trading existed is for businesses and governments to hedge their exchange risk. So if you got locked up in an Aussie dollar, now first of all, three years ago you were crying because the Aussie dollar's overvalued. And now everyone's crying, eh, the Aussie dollar's losing value. Now don't worry though, the Japanese invented that complaint well before the Aussies uh, got on board of the you know, it's overvalued and it's not worth enough. Yeah, great. So the reason Forex exists is so that you can hedge your currency risk. So I feel sorry for you, son, right? But I got 99 problems and a pip ain't one. If you're overexposed to the Aussie, maybe because you're Australian, well, get filthy stinking rich selling the Aussie dollar and it'll offset your losses and so your real net worth change might be zero but at least your neighbor lost money and you'll feel good but that's why it exists and look look how straightforward all the trading is when you're trading in the direction of the fundamentals And so that's where I'm trying to get you guys. I just want you to think about it a little bit. I don't care if it's fundamental or technical. Okay, look. And remember, 
this is if you're w upset about the Australian dollar. This right here is when Governor Stevens, the go the uh, the governor of the uh, Reserve Bank of Australia, told us it was 1,500 pips overvalued. Right there. Then we went down to this area, and he said it's still overvalued, and it dropped from 80 to 70, and now we're below 70. So, you know, that was Governor Stevens. This was Governor Stevens. Uh, and uh, my favorite trade, like, two years ago was... Is it not on this? What? What? Hang on. Pig, pig, pig. Where's my pigs? Pigs, pound, Swissy. Got a lot of Swissies. <sighs> Get out of here. I don't even have it on this. Wow. It's been a long time coming. Do, 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 do. My favorite trade um, two years ago, maybe three years ago. Bu -bu 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 -bu. All right. Let's, let's clean this up. Uh, template. All right, fine. And here. Okay. A couple of years ago, the a uh, um, couple of things really happened. Um, Uh, I'm trying to remember where did it start. Um, was I? I think it was Aussie. I started selling Aussie in here and buying British pound. But this first wave was simply Aussie losing value, and then somewhere in here, it was a rainy day. A rainy, hot summer day in Tokyo. Right, YJ? Yes. The IMF report came out saying that they thought the, the British, the UK economy was improving dramatically in the world economic, uh, what do they call it? The World Economic, not the w report, uh, W, World Economic Outlook, sorry, WEO. The WEO gave very favorable outlook <coughs> for the UK economy. And suddenly, British pound got strong. <laughs> and then Governor Stevens came in and weakened the Aussie dollar even more. Ha <laughs> ha! But this, this move here and this move here uh, represented 60% of all my trading at that time. Just redonkulous. So come up with a tradable idea, guys, a marketable idea. And by marketable, I mean you're going to sit down with a multimillionaire and say something intelligent. Intelligent enough, they say, wow, hey, can I give you my money? Um, and if you can't do that, you need to do that for yourself. What is it that you do? What's your alpha? What makes you smarter than the market? And remember, making money isn't necessarily making you smarter than the market. What an investor is going to look for, a sophisticated investor is going to look for, is that you make money, but not by taking bigger risk. And that's usually how you outperform the market. You take additional risk. And an investor doesn't want that. So an investor wants to see you make money and have um, low risk and low volatility. And the way to do that is the trade in the direction of your fundamental bias, one trade at a time, move your stop, always have 100% available margin. Think of it this way. I've had, at one time or another, over 100 open positions. 
and yet I was only using 2% of my available margin. I had 98% available margin. How does one do something like that? You have a lot of trades that break even. So the 2% I was using were my new trades. My new trades, the trades that I added that day. Okay? So therefore, right, I have very little risk. And that's what the, what the investors want to see. They want to hear from you that you have an idea they, they, because then they know what you're going to do with their money. They want you to trade that idea and they want you to do it with as little risk as possible and then have a performance, risk adjusted perhaps, Um, better than what they're getting in other less risky assets, okay? And you hang with me long enough, guys, I'll get you there. I'll teach you. So I thank you for being on my team. Okay? Peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average. Cheers.